answer a sinew bowl question that was proposed to me in a Gmail. One of my regular viewers is working on a bowl. Osage did a wonderful job uh, in this going back and forth with sinew backing. And so his question was, he saw a video, which probably the same video I saw, where this fellow was talking about the sinew bow, which is ready to be picked up. It's been ready to be picked up for a while. Just saying. But he was talking about sinew backing a bow and being careful so you don't get a false weight, which I agree of, agree with. He went so far as to say you could get a false weight of 10 pounds. And so could be a little hyperbola. It might not. There's some depending factors. Now, first of all, Let's define our term sinew backing. Are you just putting a thin, thin layer that's just supposed to protect the back? Or are you putting, like this one has, a multiple power layer? Depends. There's some differences. If you are putting on a thin layer, you're going to get a rise in, in draw weight because you're going to have a little less string follow. You're also going to be able to draw the bow further. And the further you draw the bow, the more weight there is. Just kind of going in generalities. If you're getting a power layer on here, it can raise the draw weight appreciably. You know, up to 15, 20 pounds. You know, if you do it right, that's the key. Now, it will give you, gosh, a possible false reading if you go about it by rushing a sinew jab. I am looking at it almost like, well, I'm going to put a big power layer on here. I'm going to wait two weeks. It seems hard and dry. Then I'm going to start tillering it. And I get it to 55, 60 pounds, calling it good. And then I keep drawing it back, keep using it, and it goes down to 30 pounds. The problem with that was you didn't wait long enough for your senior to cure. That depends. There are people out there that will argue with me, but I'm sorry. I'm going to say you're wrong. You can't send you back a bow with what you want to be a power layer. Just wait until it looks hard and finished and then go and use it. You have stunted that ability that send you to hold the weight. Think about it like this. Okay, this was an arm that was broken. Doing silly, foolish kid things. If I left that cast on for two weeks, the bone would heal a little bit. Could have taken it off. Feels good. Feels great. But then if I went and engaged in the activity that broke it in the first place, see what I'm saying? False weight. Suddenly my arm has a draw weight of 10 pounds because I just done broke it again. I stunted the growth. If I waited the whole, I forgot how it is. Six weeks for a cast? with this spiral fracture I had, the bone has a chance to heal fully. You know, I didn't rush it. I also used it as a club. This was in middle school, so this guy that was picking on me, suddenly I had a war club, and then he went back to it after my club was off, but that notwithstanding, a lot of that depends. If, if you get a false weight that dramatic that you tillered at 55 pounds and then it goes down to 30, to 20, to 10, you done ruined your sinew back and you stunted it. I don't know exactly what goes on to it or in it when it cures. Does it change physically, chemically? Does it just dry more? I don't know. All I know is that I'm going to follow the lead of the horn bow makers, the great horn bow makers that they did this for a living. They understood. They were in a military industrial complex. They knew their stuff. They would send you back those horn bows and then at least a year, they let that stuff cure a year. It's a, it's a game of uh, patience. If you're planning on going hunting this fall, send you back your bows now. Now, from my experience, which is, wow, I have no idea how many send you bows that I bet. I can say that I've rushed a bow or two and I've had that false weight where you get it to what you want it to be, 55, 60 pounds, or 45, what have you. I rush it, start tillering it after a certain period of time, and I did it too soon. I see that drop. I personally have seen that drop, that false weight. 
I could take two bows. Done this a lot. Basically the same, especially when they were the board bows I did. This is a stave bow. Take two exact same board bows. I sinew back them at the same time. I let one cure for a month. I let one, I just forgot about it, it cured for a year. Those bows are different. That sinew I have allowed to reach its great potential. The sinew bow that waited a long time, oh, there's a little drop in weight after you use it. Depends on temperature, it depends on humidity, it depends on if you're using it every single day, hours a day, let it rest, go back and reflex. You have allowed that sinew to reach its ultimate goal. That month long cure, just month long, if you want to use it a lot, you're going to get that, that big wave. I've got friends that also send you back bows. They send you back a lot, and I just don't tell them. They're like, I send you back it today. Then I get this a week and a half later, a week and a half. Well, I'm about ready to tell her it, and I'm sorry, it's not going to work out the way you want. Now, in some cases, they're send you backing that bow. For just a protective layer and they don't care you know if it drops in weight because they're going for a lower weight boat i suppose if you were to send you back it you didn't tell her it yet nothing and you were careful in your tellering worked it a lot stunted your sinew it's almost not worth putting it on you're going to get the true weight it's complex it's a complex question second part of this question I know I confused some people I guess what you need to take out of this is just be patient I bake the crap out of my bows I'll send you back them I might do some rough tillering before it's fully done but I'm not gonna like torture them then I like to set the bow in the Sun day after day after day this bow because it hasn't been picked up yet is actually growing as a sinew back bow every day this sets on display out in the sun it's getting better if I then unstring it I only you know drew it back a couple times I didn't injure the sinew which shouldn't be after this amount of time it's gonna improve every day it sits out in the sun without being drawn until finally boink it hits its maximum now think of it as a curve you know it's not as straight up like this the number of days, the ability of the bow. What it's going to do is it's going to start easing off. So, general, let's say that after a week, it's on a steep increase. After two weeks, it's still at a steep increase. After a month, it's still at a steep increase in getting better. After two months, it's still at a steep increase. After three months, it's starting to lower a little bit. After eight or nine months, I'm sure that it's flying level, but it's still increasing a little bit. See what I mean, Jelly Bean? The long and the short of it is, the longer you wait before you start jacking that bow around, the better off you're going to be. Unless you really screw up, you're not going to see 55-pound bow go down to 10. It leads me to believe that that fellow that was talking about that is one of the folks that rushes his senior jobs. If he has literally gotten a bow that went from 55 pounds down to 10, he waited three days before he started tellering. Just saying. I'm not going to do this again. I've got, I'm seeing car, 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 car rushing, and I just ran up here to do this. I'm not going to burden my lone employee with managing the parking spaces and stuff. I'm going to ask Santa Claus this year for a parking lot with lines. Have a good one. Hopefully you got something out of this.